As you can see, I'm Sam, I'm project manager at Headland, here to talk about Magnetometer, Magnetometer data display and archiving on large infrastructure projects. As Finn's just talked about, there's lots of infrastructure projects out there at the moment, all multiple hundreds of hectares, and how do we deal with that data? How do we display that? So, right, data display. Um, normally, you display everything as a grayscale plot or an XY trace plot. XY trace plots have now started to become out of fashion. The new EAC guidelines don't really talk about XY trace plots. It's all about the grayscale plots. They want you to show them in different types of formats, which can cause problems, which I'll go on to. We'd like to try and suggest people still use XY trace plots. So I'll go into that a little bit more later on as well. And then archiving. How do we archive these large data sets, as Finn's talked about? The ADS can't really handle anything that's not collected by a dual sensor of Parkinson that's about hectare in size. So um, we're a bit um, troubled by this at the moment. So I'm going to talk about the current issues in that. Um, so large infrastructure projects, what are they? So, brilliant. These consist of hundreds of hectares, as Finn's talked about, large irregular areas, so they're not nice square sites so um, they're normally quite irregular and it's awkward they're inland ports there's budget residential areas new towns garden villages um, linear schemes can consist of several kilometers we've done 140 hectares 30 meters wide throughout the south coast which took a long time to do um, they're normally offshore wind farm cable routes road corridors railways which everyone's possibly familiar with at the moment and pipelines so these are the current EAC guidelines on data display. So they want a survey location plan demonstrating the relationships to other mapped features. So that's essentially the overview showing where your plot is. They want grayscale plots of minimally enhanced survey data. They want grayscale plot of improved survey data. They want a grayscale plot of processed survey data and where appropriate XY trace plots of the improved magnetic data and then after that they want interpretations at a minimum scale of one to a thousand so a report which is say 200 hectares can end up being 200 illustrations long for no real reason and there's no benefit for the user so i'll go through an example a large irregular area 360 hectares let's say of a building site um, so you've got your overview showing where the survey is which is common for every single report then you'll show your grayscale and minimally enhanced data at 1 to 2500 that could be 16 illustrations then you've got your improved data on exactly the same set 16 illustrations again and then you've got your process data showing practically exactly the same thing again 16 illustrations and uh, most people don't show the xy trace plots because it's not in the guidelines that you have to show them it's only if appropriate and then you've got your illustrations of potentially 16 illustrations but if you want to zoom in on them then you can have a lot more so that's 50 illustrations with more if you want to show the xy trace plots and that's a lot for a survey that might only have a small area of archaeology in it and the rest of it's geological and um, agricultural so same thing for a linear scheme, you can have 600 hectares over 60 kilometres. You've got your survey location plan just showing where you surveyed, and then you're showing your minimally enhanced data again, then you're showing your improved data, then you're showing your process data. Then if you want to, you can show your XY trace plot, and then you're showing your interpretations. So it gets quite annoying for the illustrator, the processor, um, the person writing the report because you're, you're essentially sh showing illustrations that are superfluous f for the report and f for the reader. So for this type of survey we might be doing 90 illustrations without XY trace plots. So at Headland we'd like to suggest that the current guidelines aren't suited to these types of surveys. They can't handle well, the guidelines don't really handle these large data sets, especially GPS drive data. If you're showing multiple images of the same plot, we don't see there's any reason for that. Yes, it might help you with the interpretation to show the stages, but to show that in the report, we don't feel you have to do that. It doesn't work very well, is it? So, um, 
Too many illustrations aren't helpful for the reader. Contractors undertaking next phases of work don't have all the information to make the informed decision. So at, at Headland, we do a lot of geophysics, but we also do a lot of trial trenching, excavation, and we don't always win the <coughs> trial trenching and excavation on our own geophysics. So we're using other people's geophysics. And we'll get a report that shows a grayscale and an interpretation at, say, one to 4,000. Now that doesn't help us at all when we're actually doing the um, site checking of the f features we've found in the ground to the geophysical survey anomalies. Um, we'd like to suggest the industry tries to move away from showing the different types of the grayscale processing steps and revert back to the old way of showing XY trace plots. Now, why do we want XY trace plots? Now, Andy Boucher, one of our directors, is adamant we show XY trace plots permanently, and his understanding of it is, it's for the reader, the stakeholder, or the, the contractor, or other geophysical specialist, like myself, reading another company's report to, when my excavation project manager asked me why aren't I finding what they've interpreted. But if I don't have an XY trace plot, all I have is a flat grayscale, then I can't help it. I can't help them. It's a bit difficult. The XY trace plot will show us distinctive signatures of anomalies seen in the data rather than the flat grayscale. I started doing geophysics about 20 years ago, and I wasn't allowed to interpret from a grayscale at all. Everything was XY the trace plot. You could understand the site on the XY trace plot. You can see if you've got kilns in there, ditches, agricultural, you can see if um, anomalies are more broad, so you've got geological anomalies in there, rather than um, identifying it in archaeology, because it might be good for archaeology in the, the grayscale. And sometimes, I know we don't like to say this, we get it wrong, um, but if there's an XY trace plot in the report, a different contractor can be looking at that and they can say, no, they've got that interpretation incorrect. Because if you look at it, you are actually <coughs> recording the signature of a different type of anomaly. Right, so that's my spiel about XY trace plots. Hopefully we can try and convince the powers that be that we can move back to having a standard of XY trace plots in every single report rather than a grayscale and a grayscale and a grayscale. Um, but we'll see about that. So archiving, Finn's already um, talked a little bit about archiving. We have, well, I've had numerous conversations with the ADS about archiving. Almost every large infrastructure project we get says you have to do archiving and we'd call them up and you'd mention anything over 10 hectares and they have a panic attack about it because they just aren't geared up for it. Um, so the ADS are the only recognised archive. There may be other repositories, but they're not really archiving. So you've got the Royal Commission in Wales, or you've got the Historic Environment in Scotland. They're not an archive. They just hold, hold the data. Um, they're not geared up for the large amounts of the data being collected on the large infrastructure projects. And as Finn's mentioned again, they can't handle anything that's GPS derived. They want everything in, in grids. And which causes us problems and they also can't handle raw data from a lot of the collection software so you have to spend extra time exporting it into a format that is suitable for their archiving purposes but then that isn't the raw data and how it was collected so it causes a little bit of a problem for us um, so it's not showing very well on this um, PowerPoint presentation, unfortunately, but linear scheme, it's say 600 hectares, 100 millimeter enhanced grayscale images of the individual fields, then you've got 100 improved grayscales, these are all TIFFs, geo TIFFs, you can say that, so we've got the millimeter enhanced grayscales, improved grayscales, processed grayscales, then you've got your raw data in XYZ format or CSV, that totals about 5 gig if you've collected it with a Bartonton. Um, Cart. Then you've got your vector files of your interpretation as a, a DXF format, and then you've got the metadata for all the files, and all that will come to quite a lot of information. You won't be able to archive that over the internet. You certainly won't be able to do it um, 
um, over at ADS Easy. So, what are the issues with archiving? Um, working out the cost. If you get asked to quote <laughs> for for um, a job and don't want to archive, and they ask you how much is it going to be, it's un quantifiable. You, you can't work it out until you've finished the survey. There's an amount of the data you've got, there's the amount of images, there's the, the GIS, there's the CAD files, there's the metadata, and working out that cost, you, you can't work it out until the end. ADS Easy only handles 10 hectares. Um, is it laying playing field? Are all contractors archiving? I know that I personally, we don't archive everything because we can't. Um, are, even, are other contractors even costing for it? Uh, difficult one. We feel that the current guidelines are out of date with data collection techniques and the file formats. Um, we're working on some large infrastructure projects at the moment that when I spoke to the ADS they didn't even want the data until they had all the trail trenching and excavation project as well. So who, who gets that archive when the principal contract changes? And there seems to be a bit missing there. Um, so who gets that archive? Who keeps hold of it? Who, who actually pays for it to be archived? Um, what can be done? Early liaison with ADS is essential. Speak to the client early. Make it part of your standard practice to try to have all the files in an archival format from the start. Um, we feel that there ought to be a change in the guidelines, um, especially for large surveys and not the small scale gridded surveys that they are. Excellent trace plots need to be included in the report um, as standard. Um, uh, archiving needs to be discussed very early with the ADS and your client because it's one of the things that has been a major bugbear for a geophysicist probably the last 10 years that hasn't gone away at all. And the ADS probably need to have more liaison with us about GPS drive data because it's not really there. And there's an XY, the trace plot of a nice site in Norfolk that we did, and uh, we tend to include our trace plots as standard on it for our reports. And I'm sorry for overrunning. <laughs> Thanks, Sam.